you have the eight parts of a successful business, right? We call this the BNI triangle. And even in the sales course and cash flow, we go through this inside out, right? The most important part of this is mission team leadership. By far, not the product. Not the product. Think of Windows and Apple. Which one is superior? Operating system. Apple. Apple, like, wow, OS X is superior to Windows. But everybody has Windows. Windows. You ever, you ever figure out why? Sales. Bill Gates is a salesman. Steve Jobs is a genius. Who are you listening to? Sales people are geniuses. Sales. I mean, Bill Gates is a genius, yes, but he, Steve Jobs is a different kind of genius. But everybody knows of Bill Gates. He's a salesman. I'm sure if there's somebody else who runs a, a very large cash flow club, I'm pretty sure they might be more knowledgeable than me and certain things and all that stuff. But why is mine one of the largest in the world? Because I'm a salesman. I mastered sales from a very young age because I knew how important it was. When I read this book, I realized sales is one skill. I said, when I left university, I said, I, cannot do it. I have to get a job in sales. I joined the economy in 2007. What, uh, what were you doing at the university, may I ask? Business administration. Yeah, so it's kind of a perfect storm for somebody like me. I was actually one of the youngest cash flow owners in the world, because I was in my early 20s. Most cash flow owners tend to be in their 40s, 50s, or whatever. Um, I was still running free sessions, but I mean, the exposure, and I got to compare to my business degree. And that's when I knew, and I saw the reaction of the people who did the first session with me, and they were, yeah, they were, they were freaked out. But they went in time to spread the knowledge, you catch? So that's when I realized I had to sign my own cash for cash and take it upon myself to train as many people as possible. Until the government say, I can't train nobody, nobody else. Okay, that is a possibility. I think in the UK I have restrictions. I don't know. I think so. Well, you never know. Governments can do anything. <laughs> it's migrate. If I get banned from training from the cash, I'll just go Bobby does or something. But you wouldn't have to. I don't need yeah, that. So politicians know about it, and Patrick Manning heard about it from before. That's why he started the National Financial Literacy Program. But they saw the importance of national, um, financial literacy. They started coining the term financial literacy. And they realized people are reading Richard Kordad. But we want more financial advisors to read Richard Kordad, because they give financial advice, and they give it bad financial advice. You know? No offense, John, but uh, <laughs> you're retired. Yeah, so I'm not offended you, but you know. They still give people very bad advice, very, very bad advice. And insurance is not, insurance is not an investment. Insurance is a necessity, not an investment, right? So that's one thing we agree with the insurance industry. Insurance is a necessity. It's part of the structure. It's part of the, part of the structure in a way, but it is very, very important. It protects your assets, right? Um, but it's a necessity, it's not an investment, right? Um, but in the cash flow quadrant, employees and self-employed, yeah. In terms of pension plans, yeah, they need a pension plan. But this is where we differ, um, we are different from the insurance industry. Because in the insurance industry, um, they say everybody needs a pension plan. We say pension plans are good for these people here, but these people here is unnecessary. Because we invest in real estate. If I, if I want a pizza shop, every time a guy eats a pizza, he's paying for my retirement. If I want a, if I want a apartment building, every time they pay rent every month, they pay my retirement. They have 12 apartment buildings with 50 rooms each. Isn't that our good retirement plan? Yeah. Well, a lot of property owners that we deal with are old people. That's why we know, you know, this year, this year field, property management, very big field. And when we enter the real estate market, Remax does not do property management. When we enter the real estate market, we realize how big this market is, property management market for residential. Because all the property management companies are for commercial only. Big market for commercial too, but huge market for residential. A lot of property owners are old and tired and grumpy. And when they meet a young agent like me or any 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 of them, they will be like, can you manage this property for me, please? They actually say, please, if you get them a chance. Right? They literally want to shove money down my clothes. But, you know. So this is a green field. One of our graduates right now, Terrell Melville, he is the regional facilities manager for Scotia Bank. Right? He manages all the facilities throughout the Caribbean. So you did the terrace course? No. Oh, you mentioned before? Yeah. Yeah. Um, he, runs pro the, he runs his own property management course. So we send we fill his classes. Right? Because it's a big opportunity. So a lot of our agents are training property management and are encouraged to start their own property management businesses. 
So our agents are uh, encouraged to start their own businesses. They encourage to invest in real estate. We guide them to doing it. One of my agents right now is buying his first investment property, right, in Tobago. That's Javon Jordan. Yeah? So, I mean, that's what we do, right? Very important thing. But so, no one. Mission and team leadership. This is why military training is so powerful in business, right? And mission is the most important part of your business, the mission. Not the product, the mission. The reason for existence. So the mission of Cash or Club is to elevate the financial well-being of humanity. That's our mission. And it's such a powerful mission to elevate the financial well-being of humanity. That when when I saw the, the news about we have a coronavirus person in Trinidad and the big press conference and stuff, you think I care? This is more important. Because we have to deal with the recession that comes after. So we have to accomplish our mission. This mission is powerful. I did free cash flow for the first four years almost every weekend. That's how powerful a mission can be. Right? A lot of company owners, business owners don't have a mission. Right? Then you have a team, because business and investment are team sports, and it requires leadership. So even though we say sales is number one skill, sales is communication. That also includes leadership. So you have to have leadership skills. This is the best leadership book we have found so far. It might change later on, I never know. The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership by John Maxwell. Powerful book. And when you start reading this book, you'll see, you know, 21, some, exactly. 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership no. by John Maxwell. Aha, uh -huh, business only back there, man. Very good. It's on your book, right? It's on all, yeah. It's very, very popular, John Maxwell. 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. Um, this book changed my life. It is the best um, leadership book I've ever encountered so far. Right? The reason why I say so far, there are a lot of leadership books out there I haven't read as yet. But this changed my life. Um, one of my business failures was a bicycle courier company back about 10, 11 years ago called Downtown Bicycle Couriers. And it was a fantastic idea. We were doing deliveries in Port of Spain. What took other delivery companies an hour and a half to do? Our couriers were doing it in 15 minutes. We were fast. Apparently, Port of Spain is very small on a bike. Right? But the company failed because at first I thought it was because of them, it's their fault, people on my team. It was actually me. I didn't have leadership skills. And it showed. So even though I was good at sales and I was good at people, huh? You can take a, take a picture of it. 21 irrefutable laws of leadership. Probably pass it wrong after you take a picture. I didn't have leadership skills. So when that company failed, when I started reading leadership books, I realized, whoops, it's me. I am the reason it failed. Because I didn't have leadership skills. Right? But again, in business, and this is why you should be encouraged to make mistakes in business. Remember, the school system tells you, School system tells you making mistakes is bad. In business, making mistakes is a necessity. You have to make mistakes and learn from them as quickly as you can. Right? That's your point. Learn from your mistakes. All right. So I want to show you all something. Now, and this is the diagram John loves because it does put everything into perspective. Right? And shows you what we teach and how we teach. Right? So in this diagram here, I'm going to show you why the rich keep on getting richer and richer. And why the poor middle class is still poor middle class. And this one, this one diagram is going to change your life. Because it shows you what the school system does not teach you. And all you have to do is recognize what we call the cash flow pattern and just duplicate it. That's all. Everybody, all the thousands of people we've trained for the past 15 years, we're all doing the exact same thing. It's nothing complicated. We're doing exactly what I'm about to show you. Every one of us. John is doing it, I'm doing it, you're doing it, everybody's doing it. Right? So, this is actually what we call a financial statement. So, income statement and balance sheet. Right? So, I'll show you a simplified version of it because it looks complicated. Um, and this is the heart and soul of what we teach on cash flow. That's income, expenses, assets, and liability. Right? Um, Sorry, turn in the room. All right. So in red, I'll show you all the cash flow pattern of a poor or middle class person. And you might see some resemblance to your personal cash flow pattern. And then when I show you the other one after, you'll see what changes you have to make. Right? So we usually get our financial advice from our parents. Our parents, especially if you come from a middle class home, our parents tell us, go to school, get good grades, and get a safe, secure, Job. Job. Yeah, G-O-B stands for just over broke. 
So we got a job, we earn an income every month, we pay off all expenses every month, but we buy liabilities. We think of assets. Now, an asset is something that puts money into your pocket every single month, whether you work or not. A liability takes money out of your pocket. Yeah. Anybody want to see it? Pass around here. Pass around here. Yeah. So a liability, a liability takes money out your pocket, right? Very simple. But most people don't know that. When they take loans at the credit union, because we train a lot of credit unions, when they take loans in credit unions, mostly for liabilities. You trip to St. Martin. Well, maybe not St. Martin, but they are for right. You trip to Margarita. Or, or oh, Carnival. Woo! Much loan they take in Carnival now. You see the same people in all the all inclusive flats. You feel they have money? No, it's loan they take. Loan they take, 20,000 loan. They could, go, they could go 10 all inclusive flats and pay max. That's crazy. They take a long Christmas time to buy presents. Yes. That's a big thing. Loan Christmas time. Loan August to go on vacation with the kids and the whole family. The August vacation trip. Yeah, big loans. Loans to buy cars. So you can look rich when you drive in. Look fancy. Yeah. We call them big hat, no cattle. You look rich, but when you look at the financial statements, zero. You barely make money. All right. So this is what their cash pattern looks like. So they earn their income every month, one source of income, that being a salary. They pay off their expenses, but they, they buy liabilities. They think of assets. Right? So let me show you all the cash pattern of a rich person or somebody who thinks like a rich person. This actually starts here. It starts with your mind, how you think, right? And funny enough, people that we people that we hire and bring on team and all that stuff. I'll be honest with you. I don't look at resumes. Could you believe it? I'm a business owner that hires a lot of people, and I do not look at resumes. Guess what I look at? Mindset, character. Yes, I always look for positive mindset. Anybody with a positive mindset, I could I could turn them into a multi-millionaire very quickly. Positive mindset is number one foundation by far, by far, by far. Right? As I kill a man, can't make it in sports. Negative mindset. Once you have a negative mindset, you don't stand a chance. And negative mindset people, we get them out the team as fast as we can. I mean, with a smile on our face, of course. <laughs> but we try to get rid of them because they're negative. Right? You want to stay around positive people and have positive vibe. The more positive you are and more enthusiastic you are, the more sales you can close. Right? So in the sales course, we actually teach people how to be enthusiastic or how to fake enthusiasm. How to fake enthusiasm because funny enough, when you fake enthusiasm, even if you fake a smile for 45 seconds, guess what starts happening? You start to feel good. You start to smile. You have full control over your emotions. Where that? Yes, you have full control. So in the sales course, people have the same reaction you have. And they try it and they realize, but wait, that's really freaky. I'm feeling good. When we were making calls, yes, is yesterday we were making calls? People have butterflies in their belly making calls. But when you make learning fun, those butterflies go poof. And you call a client, you call a client who was very hard on the phone, and you're like, Shh, whatever. I realize this is fun. Once you keep it positive, you can make as much calls as possible, deal with one or two egos, but close plenty of deals. Right? One of my agents brought me, he closed in two deals this month. Um, one of his deals made $86,000. $86,000. One of his deals. One of his two deals. Right? Positive mindset. And I worked on him around December, so he with his issues and that kind of thing. But I wanted to turn his mindset around. Right? I think he was going through a hard time. He had closed on one of his businesses recently. You know, he was upset about that. And I said, no, focus on sales. Be enthusiastic. Just go after it. You know? And, he recognized that and boom, close it to the this month. So let me show you all the cash pattern of a rich person or somebody who thinks like a rich person. Right? So even if you have a job, preferably in sales, right? If you have to have a job, put it in sales so you can learn the most valuable skill in business. Well, most successful people start with sales. Right? They earn an income every month, right? They pay up the expenses every month. But the difference is we buy assets instead of liabilities. And what do assets do? Money. Put money in the pocket every single month, whether they work or not. Now there are three asset classes right? before I show you everything else. First one is my favorite asset class, business. I love business. 
so much so when my team said, Raj, let's start investing in real estate. First thing I did was go on Google and type up real estate sales franchise. And the first one came up was Remax, and I emailed them one time. I said, I want to learn real estate, so I'm going to do it through business. The technique I'm following is what um, Sam Walton and Dave Thomas did. Sam Walton built Walmart, and Dave Thomas built Wendy's. Dave Thomas started off with KFC franchises, he learned the system inside up, and then came up with Wendy's. Sam Walton learned from a, a general store franchise called Benjamin Franklin. He became the number one franchisee, and then pitched his idea for Walmart and started raising capital. His one franchisee, franchise turned him down. He okay, pitched them, and they're like, nah, we're not interested. So he went to other investors and raised the money for his first Walmart location. It was a flop, but he made it work. And then the second one and third one, he kept on raising capital that way. So how Sam Walton built Walmart step by step, we have it on document. The documented, he has a book. That's one. And two, that's what we teach at cash flow. But the difference is we don't just teach it, you see it for yourself. That's the difference. So you don't just learn from us and the books, you also learn from the games. And you also learn from those around you, the other members that are in your room, yes. that are in your course. Yeah, what year you did cash flow? 